bloody fantastic. Hello everybody, my name is Goodboy and welcome to a video on the state of Dota. How we're doing on the TI prize pool and what it all means for what's happening to Dota. So Dota has been in a definitely better place than it is now. Um, it's been a pretty much depressing crash down since about 2016. So the last two years, um, Dota in February 2016, Dota had about 709,000 or so average players per month. Uh, and that cr has steadily declined down from 600 to 500 about a year later. And then now in 2018, it's reached its all-time low in April 2018 this year of 430,000 unique players. So getting on for nearly half of what it used to be. Um, and about as low as what it was in April 2014, where we just saw meteoric growth. But that shows you how far we've kind of come and then also how much we've kind of collapsed. So that's that's disappointing, shall we say. But I'll get into why that's somewhat unsurprising. Then we move on to the international prize tracker. And as of today, so this is day 56 um, since the beginning of the release of the international battle pass and all that sort of jazz. It is compared to the 2017 prize pool, um, just ever so slightly below um, by about a few hundred thousand dollars, which in the grand scheme of nearly a $20 million prize pool is, is almost nothing. So, so very, very similar, neck on neck. But bearing in mind the average player base was nearly 100,000 average players per month. The fact that the actual um, TI prize pool is so close to it, even though it's slightly below, is kind of encouraging or a wake-up reality for how demographics of Dota are changing. Now, if you plot it in terms of days before the grand finals, actually, the TI8 prize pool is actually way ahead of TI7 and TI6. Um, it is ahead in that respect. But in terms of by day of release, um, it is just very, very slightly behind, approximately 1.74% behind. So what does this all mean? And what is happening to our beloved game of Dota? Oh yeah, sorry, one other sort of thing as well. I wanted to also do a most popular PC games core comparison. Number one is the game which we will not speak about. Uh, and number 10 is Dota. Now, the thing is, obviously, you know, I've kind of always said that Dota is sort of the second most popular game in the world. That's not strictly true by average of monthly players on PCs. Um, but it's 10th ranking, which is what it's currently as, uh, according to popular website, uh, newzoo.com, um, actually is an improvement from where it was in terms of average players compared to where it was a year ago and the year before that. Now, like I say, there are shifts and there's limited size pools, so there is that kind of factor. But nonetheless, that's kind of the lay of the land, as it were. So what does it all mean? And where am I going with this? And uh, what are the implications for those of us that still play Dota? Um, so first off, with the whole decline in player base, it does appear to have stabilized. I want to say, so this year, I want to say it's sort of, it reaches peak low round about April and has steadily been gaining since. Um, and even prior to the, the Battle Pass release, although it's kind of succinct actually with the Battle Pass release, um, there was a bit of an upward tick again. And people are reinvigorated as the biggest sporting event, esports event of the year starts to come to life. So in that respect, it's positive. In terms of the game crashing much further, I don't think we're going to necessarily see that. I think we've kind of reached the point where, all right, guys. Enough is enough. So I'm predicting more of a stable, flatlined sort of place for Dota. But the thing that's interesting is that even though there's less players, there's the same, if not more, money. So what's happened? And I'll tell you what's happened. We've all got older. <laughs> the average age of the Dota player has gone up. And so the earning power 
of each individual Dota player on average is increasing every single year. We're not in a recession. That's another big one as well. That's quite helpful. And we have positive economic growth ahead of us. So actually, while Dota as itself is kind of, you know, going into decline, sadly, actually the player base, even though it's slightly shrunk from last year, they are slightly richer. So it cancels itself out. The other thing as well as, of course, is the battle pass is an awesome set of prizes and it makes Dota quite fun. One would almost think it would be a good idea to have a continuous battle pass that people can continually do quests for so that people are continually drawn to the game, like the brilliant ideas that Blizzard have to get people hooked on games like Hearthstone. But anyway, whatever. We can go through this. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a problem with the model that makes that difficult. But ah, we won't get into that. So that's kind of happened there. And, uh, and it's, it's interesting as well because the future for esports is very, very promising in the sense that um, the amount of money getting poured into it is going to become higher and higher and higher. And even though people don't take Dota or there are less people taking Dota as seriously, they're still going to want the really cool loot because they used to play the game and it's still really awesome and fun. Plus, you never really truly leave Dota, do you? You know, let's, let's face facts. You know, no one really quits Dota properly. You might have spells where you don't play it, but you know, it's, it's kind of what's of that. I suppose the most challenging thing about this whole thing is, well, hold on a second there. Then why is Dota declining? What's What's gone wrong? So the first one is the emergence of more popular games. So, for example, if you look at the most played PC games right now, after the first one, which is a name we will not mention, you know the one, uh, two new games have come on the block, Fortnite and Player Unknown Battlegrounds, which actually, Fortnite, a couple of months ago, was literally the most played game in the world, full stop. Um, everyone was playing it, literally no no exceptions. And then Player Unknown Battlegrounds, PUBG, Came out last year. I got hooked. Did some videos. People unsubscribed. You know, standard drill. Um, so those two new games have kind of come in as well. Other games are still seeing very solid player bases like CS:GO, like Overwatch, uh, World of Warcraft has actually seen a little bit of resurgence as well. So other games are being competitive and are very, very good. Blizzard, I would say, are probably the most compelling at getting you to continue to play their games. So um, very, very smart approach business models that I'm seeing that we don't really see as much with Valve doing, unfortunately. I wish they did, but they don't, and there's reasons for that. The second issue, and I'm sorry to be the one that kind of continually says this, is that unfortunately Dota is extremely hostile towards new players. And it's hostile towards new players for different reasons. The first reason that it's hostile towards new players is actually just because that's how Dota is. People play easy games. Like when you when you got like the average gamer who's like, yeah, I went around and shot some stuff and then died. Yeah, cool. Then to go into the extreme complexity of Dota and why it's like a massive deal if you've got AI so you're able to replicate the success of Dota. It's it's huge because it's just such a hard game. So obviously that that puts a lot of people off. And there's there's you know complaints like, oh, you gotta go online and get guys to learn to get better at Dota. And it's like, well, yeah, but that's why it's such a good game. And also there are a lot of guys, including my channel, which are free. So there is that. And then of course there is the old salt issue. Now, like I say, funny enough, older players in Dota, people who are in their 30s, for example, like myself, um, actually tend to be less ragey and less tilty. Not always, and I'm guilty of this myself. But generally, new players aren't getting into it, uh, which is a big, big, big problem for us. And Valve have tried to address it, but all they did really when they tried to address it was screw over the existing player base <laughs> instead of, you know, whatever. So there is still the interface issues with Dota and, you know, all that kind of jazz. I think Valve also don't really massively promote Dota. There's not enough aggressive advertising. Riot Games, on the other hand, aggressively promote League of Legends all the time. And I'm embarrassed to say, and I can't control this, by the way, without fully demonetizing my channel, even League of Legends videos have come up on my channel. I've yet to see a Dota one. Don't not say that doesn't happen, but I don't think there is any active advertising campaigns. So there's your first problem. Second one is like, why? Why play? There aren't any in-game reward systems like you do have with these other games. So these these are the problems. These are the issues that we're kind of seeing with Dota that need to be fixed and addressed. Anyway, so let's come into land. Um, otherwise, this video will take a bajillion years. 
Um, so the good news is Dota, ironically, is actually stable now in terms of its decline. It looks like we're going to sort of just stay steady as we are for a bit um, without seeing a massive drop. Um, so that's that's kind of good. So the, the hemorrhage, in theory, has slowed down. And also, as people get bored with other games, they're kind of coming back to Dota. Um, but there's more competition, unfortunately. So that makes things more difficult. The bad news is still same existing problems that I've been commenting on for the last three or four years now, which is horrifically bad for new players, extremely hostile towards new players. And we're still not doing enough to address, uh, to promote Dota on a grassroots level. And just, just good old advertising is not done by Valve. So there are problems. There are big problems and these need to be addressed. But... I think the nice thing about hitting rock bottom is the only way is up. So let's end on that. Hey everybody, tell me what you think below. Please give me a like, subscribe, and share. And uh, comment below and tell me what you think about the future of Dota. Thank you and goodbye.